Hey guys, it's Brad. Well, today I got something a little different for you guys. If you know my channel, you know I do a lot of uh, property tours all around Italy, mostly central Italy, and I try to do very smart property tours so you don't get in a lot of trouble, add a little extra information. If you're not familiar with the channel, go ahead and subscribe, watch some of the old videos, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. Today we're in Cortona, and what we're doing that's different is we're gonna just take a little bit more of a deep dive into the city itself not actually go into any houses that are for sale and tour them, but we're gonna go through some local listings here inside the Centro Storico in Cortona. We're in Southern Tuscany. We're about an hour and a half, two hours north of Rome, about an hour and a half south of Florence. We're about 40 minutes from Perugia, and we're about 30 minutes from my home in Montepulciano. So the first property we're gonna look at today is this one bedroom, two bath apartment that is right in the historic district. It's 220,000 euros asking price, one bedroom, two baths, large kitchen, separate cellar, but I could never find any photos of that cellar. The old beams in the ceiling, take a look at those. They're, they're wonky, they're, they're crooked, they're awesome beams. And the brickwork is awesome too. The kitchen, I wouldn't have picked this exact style. It's a little bit too modern, I think, for this apartment. But if it's just a rental, I think you can probably get away with it. Now, if I was going to buy this apartment as an investment property, I would probably not bother going back and trying to change out this kitchen. But I think they could have done a much better job of what they picked. However, it's probably for a rental. You can tell this is set up to be an Airbnb. And I think for the rental circuit, as they call it here, that kitchen is going to be more than fine. People should be happy. I've seen a lot of apartments near the historic centers, the Centro Storicos of these towns. I got to tell you, it's very nice to see something with like 12 foot plus ceilings. The beams are phenomenal. They're original. The stonework, the brickwork, the flooring is perfect. I don't see anything not to like about this room except the god awful furniture. Now I got to tell you, I love that wall on the left side. Those blocks, I bet you they weigh over a thousand pounds, some of them. Unbelievable. Now, look closely at the photo. You can tell this is an Airbnb because the table, right almost dead center, has all sorts of like brochures and things on it. So you know this is a rental and you need to get the rental history from the seller to know how much, if anything, they were actually making renting this out. Now, I looked all through this listing and I could not find what they have outside that double door towards the back of the room. It looks like a back patio. Uh, I think this is ground level, so it must be some sort of patio. But honestly, I didn't see it in the listing or any photos. So, And if I can give you a little bit of advice, if you're thinking about getting something like this and using it as a rental, bounce that crappy furniture right out of there the first day you get there. That is horrific. Take all new photos and get some really nice, comfortable, classy furniture. It'll do all the difference in the world for your listing and for the number of nights you're gonna be able to rent this on booking.com, which is bigger here than Airbnb. Other than the god-awful furniture, there is nothing not to like about this bedroom. Looks like a big barrel ceiling. You can see on the right side, it goes up even higher. Room for a king with extra room even for bags. A luggage rack, that's super important and all this furniture needs to be bounced out of here. Even the mattress, I can tell, is horrific. Every month on the first Sunday and the Saturday preceding the first Sunday is the Arezzo Antiques Fair. You can find incredible furniture there for so inexpensive. The furniture that they show at the fair, if you find the right dealers, is cheaper than buying mass-produced big box store furniture. So we're gonna take a look around town and I wanna show you guys some of the great shops and things. Now, right now, I'm just on a random alleyway and it's cute, it's really neat. Uh, but it's just a random alleyway because it's Good Friday, it's Easter weekend, 2024, and the city is incredibly busy. I couldn't even film because it was car after car after car and that's in the Centro Storico. So it's a very busy hilltop town, prices here are probably less than, say, Luca, or, of course, Florence and Rome, maybe on par with Montepulciano, maybe a little bit less, 
but certainly more expensive than many, many, many hilltop towns because everything's here and because it's so famous. And why is it so famous? Well, last century, somebody wrote a book and made a movie called, uh, oh yeah, Under the Tuscan Sun. And the place really blew up. But even before Under the Tuscan Sun, Cortona was a very popular place with expats and it was a center for art. It is known as Cortona, la città da arte. So Cortona was originally known as Cortun, and it was an Etruscan city, and it was uh, started about 800 years before the Roman Empire really got going. The Etruscans kind of just went away, uh, but they were really just melded probably into the Roman Empire. And this was the, one of the capitals of their city-state, which basically encompassed southern Tuscany, western Umbria, and northern Lazio, or as I call it, home. And it was a bustling place, a big trade uh, center uh, on the crossroads for the whole area. And it was a center for art. And there's still to this day walls and remnants of things that they had built even before the Romans. I had mentioned earlier that Cortona is a little bit cheaper than Montepulciano where I live and where I own my properties at TuscanPalace.com. Now, I can tell you, you would not be able to find right next to the historic district, a historic apartment like this for 180,000 euros. Now, I think they've done the best they could do with the hand they were dealt with this apartment, but I'm telling you, the kitchen is tiny. This photo uses a wide angle lens and it's very deceiving. We'll talk about that in a second. But I do like the beams. I like the way the staircase comes in and I like the fact that the front door is ground level. Now, supposedly it is just steps from the historic district. It's nice to have ground level, even though this one splits. Steps go up to the bedrooms, steps go down to the kitchen. But it's nice to be able to get yourself or your guest in off of the street, maybe out of the rain, get your bags put down before you have to go trudging up a couple flights. So I think there being a little bit of sneaky peats in this thing because that is a very small kitchen. Use things that are inside the photo for scale to help you understand how wide something really is. Look at the inset. That's the photo they're showing. This is what it looks like in reality. It is what it is for 180,000 euros for a two bedroom, one bath, right next to the Centro Historico, probably not a bad deal. Somebody did a really good job decorating this place. I tell you, they did a really nice look for not much money. That's just a curtain rod with some pillows hanging on it as the back of the uh, headboard. And the bed, just you could get a nice mattress here for 800 euros, comes with a frame, some nice uh, linens and Boom, you're done, and it looks very elegant and clean. Ditto for this place, very nicely done. The wood beams, people are gonna move in this place on their vacation and really feel like they came to Tuscany. Those wood beams waking up, looking at them in the morning, there's a nice window, most of the year you'll probably have a good breeze, you're up at 2,000 feet elevation, bathroom's right in the hallway. I mean, it looks great to me. So let's go up and get on the main street. It's gonna be noisy. There's maybe some cars passing, a lot of people talking, but we can talk about the current state of Cortona as we're looking around the town, seeing all the great shops, wine stores, restaurants. It's really a neat town. We only came here for the first time about four months ago, Olivia and I, and we love coming up here. We have some very special restaurants we like here. So let's go take a look at, around and see what we got. Okay guys, well our third property is going to be a luxury property, uh, certainly when you get done with it. This does have work that needs to be done. This is located right inside the Centro Storico. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was door number 13, the bigger door in the photo, because that's the one that's kind of ajar. Uh, either one would be okay. And the apartment needs some finishing, so let's go inside and see what 450,000 euros for a two bedroom, two bath gets us. All right, well, here we are inside the property. Now, first thing you got to notice is up in the ceiling on the left side, in the wall, the electrical hasn't been connected to the light fixture, so you're going to be on the hook for that. It looks like a gas pipe there on the left side, almost in the corner of the yellow pipe, 
Maybe that's for a fireplace that they were thinking about putting in, uh, in addition to the radiant heat that's right next to it. Who knows? So same room, just a different angle. You can see out the doorway, we'll be able to see from outside, the yard is running right behind that wall that we're staring at through the window. There's uh, more electrical, that electrical again coming down, it needs to be finished up. But overall, the place looks like it was just recently completely remodeled and they did a good job. The bathroom reminds me a lot of one of the big palace apartments that I remodeled for myself in Montepulciano. Uh, we use almost a very similar kind of tile, might be the same tile. Uh, and then the floor here looks great. All the fixtures are new, so that's all great. They use good quality. Uh, the floating fixtures, the sink's really cool looking. You still need to get the vanity mirror with the uh, electrified. Those are about four or $500. If you were doing this bathroom uh, completely down to the walls, I bet it would have cost about four to $5,000 if you didn't put in a shower and didn't have to move any plumbing. Now, the backyard is dog heaven, right? My boys would have loved this. We lived in one of our apartments in the historic center in Montepulciano last summer for a month. And even though they look great sitting here in the apartment, every time they wanted to go out, we had to leash them up, take them through the crowds. It's kind of a pain. I would have killed to have a backyard with nice green grass. And this one's really cool with that wall there. Uh, it's tiny, but it doesn't look like it's claustrophobic. Another good look at the grass on the other side. I mean, it's, it's nice. This place is well turned out. Uh, someone did a really good job doing the remodel. If uh, you can get a lot of grass like this in the Centro Storico, you're going to pay a premium for it. It's hard to find stuff. You could put a table and eat out here. So I give this place an eight. I, I think it's a really nice place. You just have to get it finished up. Sometimes you can look at a listing and just tell this is a serious apartment. This is something that is so special. This is a 250 square meter, 2,700 square foot, almost million euro apartment. And to me, it looks like it's worth every single penny. When you're looking at listings for properties like this, don't just go clicky, clicky, clicky through all the photos. Stop and take a look at them. Look at the work on the doors. Look at that wood. Must be like a chestnut. Almost looks like teak. And the ceiling, the relief in those, in those flowers in the ceiling. These things are just amazing. And it's going to give you a great pride of ownership. Or if you're renting this out on the rental market, it's going to give you people that are willing to pay top dollar to stay here. The first thing I would do is try to figure out how to maybe keep most of the furniture that's in here. They're probably willing to sell it, as often the case in these listings. But I can tell you, this thing has turned out super duper nice. It reminds me of my Burati Palace apartment in Montepulciano. That's how nice this is. Even though there's not a big set of windows in every room, it feels light and open. They did a great job with the painting here. I wouldn't touch anything in this place. The floors look historic. They look in excellent condition. The beams are nice. I just, gosh, I love everything about this place. I don't know who did the decorating on this, but I got to tell you, they did a fabulous job. This is on par with the work that my decorator does in Montepulciano. It is clean and light. It feels fresh and airy. And that's in a place that's probably 400, 500 years old with smallish windows. Fabulous job. You can always go on the website for my properties that I own. I don't just do tours. I put my money where my mouth is on buying stuff here. 
go to TuscanPalace.com, click on my apartments. You can see what we're renting them for. Hey, book something and come and stay. But it'll give you a good idea of what you need to have your places looking like to get top dollar. So this is the reverse angle of that same room. And I wanted you to just take a good look at that window. That is not a huge window, but my God, with the way they have this place decorated, it lets in a lot of light, lights up the whole room because of the color palette that they've chosen. Same thing with this room, nice, light, airy. This one's a little more cluttered and you can tell this is not a nightly rental because you wouldn't have a stair stepper shoved in it and all the stuff laying around. So good to know this is a family home. Again, very nicely done. I mean, really, guys, I can't see anything wrong with this place. I know it's high end. It may not be your price point, but it's nice to see what the market can bear. And one last little look out the window. Nice view, probably to the south, it looks like. What a great apartment. So now we're out on the main shopping street in the Centro Storico of Cortona. This is Via Nazionale. A lot of tourist shops, very nice shops, wine shops, perfume shops, even a tourist store with postcards and magnets. But this is very different than the kind of shopping you'll find down below in Camuchilla. So up here you have more of your specialty kind of stores, but your everyday shopping is going to be down below in Basso Cortona, which is called Camuchilla. Wow, guys. So there's our friendly sommelier. So these are the type of quality shops that you're going to find in Cortona. And part of the reason you find such high quality is because it's an outstanding tourist location and because it also has a huge expatriate community. Now we're going to go down to Basso Cortona. Basso Cortona was built mainly in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. There's a lot of building in Italy back in the 1960s to the 1970s. It was a boom time. So we're going to go down and see now the real estate prices down there are about half of what they are up here in the, in the historic center, in the Centro Storico of Cortona. So we're going to go down, we'll look at some different listings, and I want to show you a particular store or two that are just fabulous stores, and the prices, one of them is a plant store. You will not believe the pricing on orchids and all sorts of plants here. It's just unbelievable. We can't wait to have our own not rented house so that we can make an incredible garden. All right, so let's get down to Camuchia. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't show you guys this restaurant. This is Osteria del Teatro. And it is most fabulous. It's a Michelin rated restaurant, so it's in their guide. I'm not sure if they currently have a star because, you know, those kind of come and go. But it is the most fabulous meal. Hey guys, welcome to 1969. This is a 149,000 euro asking price, 1,700 square foot apartment, three bedrooms, two baths, and even though yes, it's very dated, it is in excellent, excellent condition. I can't see other than 
updating the look of the apartment, anything that you would have to do. Now, what would I do to this apartment? Mainly, I'd concentrate on the floors. It's just too much detail. It's too much pattern for me. I would come in with some nice wood or maybe some sort of more neutral tile. I took a good look at this whole listing and all the photos, and I frankly don't see anything in a single one of them that shows any sort of issues. It's amazing how styles change over time. I just can't imagine that at any point in history, that much going on was a, a classic look. But easy to fix. Come in with some new flooring and uh, maybe get rid of the wallpaper. It's probably already past its prime. And maybe have a look more like this room. Except in this room, you got to lose the orange curtains and you're going to have to change the floor. But really, for about 20000 I think you could come in and give this place a really beautiful, beautiful remake. If it was me. I would come into this and offer a little under asking price. I think you come in, you spend $25,000, get it all updated, and you have a wonderful home for the rest of your life, if this is what you're looking for, for under 200,000 euros. And remember guys, with or without residency, the property tax on this house, even if you're not a resident, is going to be less than $1,000 a year. I paid $2,000 a month in Texas. So you can see in this photo, they've already started working on changing out the floors. With the same wallpaper, it still looks kind of wonky. But the floor that they chose is actually pretty nice. I don't mind that floor at all. Something like that. I think the key is getting rid of that wallpaper unless you're just really into it. And this next transition will give you a great idea of how it could look. Look at the floor when you have more normal walls. Then you can come in with some really nice artwork. Just so you guys know, Labor here is generally less than, say, in the United States, and materials can be a little bit less as well. When we put in our wood flooring and all the bedrooms in our biggest apartment, it cost us about 70 euros per square meter, or roughly 9 to $10 a square foot. Now, talking about the 60s again, that couch is definitely straight up 1970s. They moved that in the day they got this place, and I know because I started buildasofa.com, and I know sofas. I'm all about reuse and recycle, but this to me is a total redo. I cannot do anything with this. I do not like to take showers inside of a tub. I think it's dangerous. I would remove all that horrific tile and just give it a nice contemporary look. When y'all are looking at these listings, don't just see this photo and say, oh, it has a deck. Look at the street. Look at the quality of the cars that are on it. How are the trees trimmed up? How do the other buildings look? Is there any graffiti? Is the street full of potholes? All these things you can discern a lot about the area. And remember this too. I spent years looking at these listings before I started purchasing properties in Italy. We've purchased five now. It's super important that you educate yourself on the areas, the quality, how to read these listings, so that you don't waste time when you are really ready to start buying. The more you can educate yourself, and I mean including learning the language, the easier your transition to moving to Italy full-time is going to be. I promise. All right, well, here's the last house in this video series. This house is 200,000 euros asking price, 2,200 square feet, about 200 square meters. It's just a two bedroom, one bath, but it has a lot of bigger open spaces. It's in a nice area of uh, Kamuchia. It's kind of out in the country, but very close into the city. And take a good look at the roof in this photo. You can tell that it's in pretty good shape, but you always, always got to get it checked. 
Here's a different view of the front of the house. You can see the old doorway, the, the ghost of it, where they uh, bricked it over, rocked it over. This house is uh, divided up in the upstairs is two bedrooms and a study. And they mentioned that you could easily put in a bathroom. Easily, maybe, yes, no. It's all about running the water and the wastewater. Other than that, it's not difficult to put in a bathroom. Downstairs, you have the entryway. You have a pretty good sized kitchen. You have a wonderful arch and a nice sized living room, fireplaces. It's a pretty nice little house. I got to say, it has some style. Now, it's a nice kitchen. I mean, it's real classic Italian kitchen. Personally, I would throw in a better stove and maybe bounce the dishwasher. I'd rather hand wash my dishes and have a wolf stove than have a dishwasher and a little stove like that. I really like a fireplace in the kitchen. You get that little bit of smoky smell going on. You're drinking wine and you're cooking. I think this would be fabulous. The house is really, really cute. I personally like all the stonework and the listing said that this had a very important archway. And if I was an archway and I looked like that, I would think I was important too. Bedroom's nice, light and airy. I bet you get a good breeze coming through there. The flooring looks like 1960s, so probably the last time it was really remodeled. The walls need to be repainted. The bathroom, also 1960s probably, uh, maybe 70s. Uh, needs a refresh, four or 5,000 euros, and you should be good to go. I think money spent on bathroom remodels is money really well spent, and it's usually not a lot of money to put something back together super nice. The plumbing is probably all in perfect shape, so it's just a matter of buying new fixtures and new tile, maybe a new shower enclosure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed going through these listings with me. I know it's not the same as a property tour, but we can see a lot more properties this way sometimes. Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, well, that's about it for today's uh, deep dive tour of Cortona and its lower sister city, Camuchilla. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It means a lot to Oli and I. It uh, gets us more views, more people knowing about us, more people we can help, and uh, more people we can meet when you guys come to Tuscany. Make sure you look us up at TuscanPalace.com. It's our rental business here. That's why I talk so much about real estate. If you haven't already, you can pick up my book on Amazon, 1995. Uh, for the record, about 10 of it is the printing cost. Five goes to Amazon. Uh, so but if you want to go to the description for my channel, there's a PayPal link there. If you send in 10 bucks, I will send you a PDF copy of all the text. What you will miss out on is the 80 plus color photos that I put into the book as well. It's the printing cost that makes it so high. Also available on Kindle for the same 10 bucks. So whatever you guys like to do. We'll see you on the next deep dive uh, property tour, uh, city tour on Brad's World. And I really appreciate you guys coming with me. Ciao.